I like, click, subscribe, do all that. You already know what time it is. It's Netflix time. This series is called The Serpent. In the 1970s, merciless killer Charles Sabraha, I'm messing up the last name, anyway, preys on travelers exploring the quote unquote hippie trail of South Asia based on shock and true events. So it just came out, season one is eight episodes, an hour long a piece. Now, these are all things that really took place back in the 1970s for real. So before we cover episode one, just need to let y'all know something. The timelines jump back and forth throughout the episode, so you gotta bear with me on this one. All right, y'all, let's get it. So it starts off, we get a clip of the real James talking to this reporter about how he got off scot-free on one case. What case are they talking about? Oh, no. All right, so this is who played Charles in the show. Okay, this is 1973. They're in Thailand, Bangkok to be exact. There's his wife, Marie, and this guy in the middle is named Ajay. I'll explain him later on. In this particular scene, Charles goes upstairs to crush up something, puts it in a cup, and I'm guessing they're pouring milk in it. Well, Marie was. Some guy's in his room sick, or at least Charles is telling him, like, hey, you gotta try to take the fever down. I'm not just sure if the guy just died or what, but he, he asks Maria to bring him his bag. He takes this guy's passport and a bunch of money. And what he does is he cuts this guy's face off the passport to put his face on it. You know he's had to done this before because, one, look at all the pictures of himself, and two, you have to be precise trying to pull this shit off. Well, anyway, him and his wife go through customs, they get approved, and now they're making their way to Hong Kong. Once they arrive, they make sales of some people and some jewelry. He goes to a jewelry store and starts talking to this guy named Wee. He's about to buy uh, his girl something, some type of jewelry, I guess like a wedding ring or something. He strikes up a conversation, tells him how he can get it, you know, half off, whatever like that. He tells him to come see me, he gives him a business card, he's like, I'll get it for you for half the price. Now if I win, I should be thinking to myself, one, you just popped about the blue, two, what's the catch? But no, he talks it over with his girl, and the next thing you know, they're all in Bangkok. Charles tells him they can stay at our villa to think it over and all that. And everything's all good at gravy for the time being. Alright, here come the time jumps. Two months later at this police station in Dutch, we got a detective by the name of Herman Kippenberg that's trying to find out about two people missing. And yes, the two people they're talking about is Wim and Leah. He hops in a cab for a meeting with the ambassador, but, you know, traffic is, is ridiculous out there. So he basically just walks the next three blocks. Kind of hilarious when he got there, the cab driver was there too. Should have listened to the man when he said he knew some shortcuts. Anyway, he talks to the ambassador about this case. Probably thinking to yourself, like, how's he so close to the ambassador? Because he's married to his granddaughter, that's why. So he's brushing it off like, man, they're probably not missing. They're just a bunch of hippies, you know what I'm saying? They're doing what they do. Basically, they ain't bothered with the shit. All right, now we're jumping back two months earlier. See, I told you the time time, time I was going to flip. Now we're going back to when Wim and Lita were first getting on the airport. And they were met by Ajay, of course. So apparently they thought they was going to the Santa Cruz Hotel. But Ajay was like, nah, we're going to set you up in the villa. So they finally get to the villa. They meet up with everybody at the house. This guy in the middle, I don't know his name, but I feel like he's going to be real important. So they set up in their rooms, living a good life with this clock sitting there. I'll explain the significance of that later on, too. So now we're jumping ahead two months later again. They made some calls to the cops, but they're not interested in the case either. Either that, they're just not picking up the phone. So he talks to this guy I guess he could look to like a father figure, and he tells him the way about investigating or going about it if nobody else is trying to pick up the case. He says if you really think they're missing, one, check their passports, two, check their letters and see if they picked up any mail. Which makes a hell of a lot of sense, right? Throughout all this, talking to his wife, he finds out they were supposed to have gone to the Santa Cruz Hotel. But we obviously know they didn't get there. So after that, Herman and his wife do more digging. Okay, so now we go back to four months earlier, still at the Santa Cruz Hotel. You see Charles and Ajay sitting on the other side of it. Here we have this lady named Teresa. She meets up with this random chick and tells her that she's going to Nepal tomorrow. So she just hops along on a boat and goes along with her. She tries to get her to smoke, but she's like, nah, I'm not trying to smoke. Then she asks Teresa, like, why Nepal? Her reason is she's about to become a nun, but she wants to do all the things and psychic things in her life before she does that and make that commitment so they make their way to a buddhist temple that drawing right there is very significant she begins to pray and meditate and she reads this book called the tibetan book of the dead it's a book about self-liberation it was also known as the bardo bathal bardo thadal my bad well afterwards they go to get a drink and guess who shows up at the bar this nigga Ajay, who happens to know teresa's friend he tells them about a party that's supposed to be happening tonight, but really he's just trying to take it back to the villa. And because Teresa wants to do her things adventurous before she becomes a nun, she decides to go with her job. Four months later, we go back to Herman and his mentor, and they're about to meet the Eastern District Chief. Herman keeps going on about the investigation, and the Chief tells them this one story about survivors they found, but they gave wrong names or information or something like that. But Herman didn't get the end of the story before he left, so he followed him outside and told him the end of the story. And this is when he starts getting ideas! Two months earlier, back at Charles's villa. See, I told you to switch is back it up from back and forth like that. Charles doing the thing, selling jewels. William's looking for his girl. Charles tells her he's by the pool. Lena asks Marie how did her, her and Charles first meet. She doesn't really give a whole lot of backstory to it, and honestly, one, if they're about that life, why would she tell her anything? But she basically tells her she came out here, met him, fell in love, and she never wanted to leave. 
while on the balcony. He wants to help him with his money problems by getting him to sell jewels for like half the price or something in different countries. But what he's really trying to do is get his girl to sell him for like 15000 William is telling her like, man, she's not really a material girl. He's like, man, of course she's a material girl. She just don't face the same challenges you do to obtain it. Which is also very accurate, but you can tell this guy's a master manipulator. So later on, while Weem and Leah are in the pool, as Marie's keeping a lookout, Charles goes through their stuff and digs through their money and passports. Oh shit. Later on, they get on the boat to go to this festival. Marie asks Leah about the proposal, but she ain't with it. Leah says she can't afford it, but Marie's like, nah, I don't believe you, dog. You just get that feeling Leah fucked up by refusing to accept the gems. Then at the house, they show Charles crushing up shit. You probably put it in one of those wine glasses. They all at the house celebrating. Leah starts throwing up. Two months later, we go back to Herman. So because nobody's listening to him, him and his wife are going to make the brave decision to bust it to the Eastern District Court Police Station. Yeah, it's a ridiculous risk on a hunch, right? Now we skip back to four months earlier where Jai was taking Teresa to the house. She meets Marie, Charles. Remember green shirt from earlier? Well, apparently that's his favorite color because he's green shirt here and he's dancing with this girl. Apparently she wants to choose him to sleep with, you know what I'm saying? All right, remember that clock I showed you earlier that Wim and Lena had? That clock originally along, belonged to Teresa. Right before she's about to make it do what it do, here comes Charles convincing her to party and do it up, you know what I'm saying, before she becomes a nun. He notices her bag open with all these traveler checks. Her bag just open like that, right? She says it's for the monastery, but I got a feeling I know what he's gonna do with the money. Well, anyway, he convinces her to come to one of his clubs, and she leaves old boy behind. You can tell he's been living there for a long time, and he knows what goes on down there, you know what I'm saying? Downtown, they go to this spot, and as she's turning her head, he literally spikes the drink with the quickness. That strippers dancing with snakes around him and shit. At this point, Charles is just waiting for that shit to take effect. Once she starts throwing up, she knows right away she's been spiked. But there's not really a whole lot she can do about it at this point. He tells her she's a filthy American, and him and Ajay drive off with her. Then they end up at the beach. Ajay's like, so what are we doing with her, yeah? He said, man, we're gonna put a bikini on her and make her feel like she drowned from swimming. And Ajay asks him, man, you've never been caught before, right? Keep in mind, this is four months ago. It's probably around the time when he first started dealing with him, so. Yeah. He's like, no, they ain't never catch me doing nothing. And so, that's what they do. They give a flashback to a girl, the girl that Teresa met, who obviously doesn't know what's going on. They never really said where she was headed to. The next couple days, Fisherman was roping up thinking he's catching some fish, and he ended up pulling up Teresa. Just like the pictures she saw in the temple. Symbolism, nigga! Well, anyway, we go to two months later, now you know where that clock comes from. Back to Weem and Lena, they both sick in the bed. Because remember, they were throwing up at the table drinking wine, right? Yeah. At the same time, we're getting Herman at the station trying to get classified information. So as they're about to look through the pictures, Lena's like, what the heck is going on? Why we keep throwing up? Marie ain't saying shit because she knows. And then she just gets up and walks away from her. And then we got this nigga right here. Meanwhile, the picture that Herman Herman's looking up are the pictures of their clothing, Weem and Lena's. Then they find another picture with a stitch that says Made in Holland, indicating for sure that it's them. So to put in a nutshell, Wim and Lena at that point are dead, and because of the clothing that was found, they were burnt alive. Charles, you sick fuck. The thing that's baffling Herman is, like, why haven't the police done anything about this? And that's the end of the first episode, shit. I'm all in. And remember, this is based off a real story. The Serpent on Netflix. Check it out. Like, click, subscribe, do all that. You already know what time it is. Slick DZ out the easy, mister. See you again. Big, you got slogan.